Welcome to Economics Wise. Our course for today is macroeconomics. The topic before us is monetary and fiscal policy using ISLM model. Please, I'd like you to like, comment, subscribe to this video, to this channel, and we move to today's business. We need to understand some concepts to be able to fully get the foundation of this effectiveness of monetary policy and fiscal policy using ISLM curve. So first and foremost, we need to understand monetary policy. And on my slide here, we see monetary policy is simply a deliberate attempt made by monetary authorities, usually the central bank, to control the stock or the quantity of money in an economy. Now, a deliberate attempt by monetary authorities. Monetary authorities are those financial institutions that regulate the con or control the supply of money in the economy. And the most common one is the central bank. Monetary policy instruments include interest rates, exchange rates, credit control. Anything that affects the supply of money in the economy can be used to control the stock or the quantity of money in the economy. However, monetary policy of two varying types. We have the expansionary monetary policy and the contractionary monetary policy. The first, which is on our list, which is expansionary monetary policy, from the word expansion simply means increasing the money supply in the economy. However, from our different instruments of monetary policy, the first or the most important one we're talking about is the interest rates. Interest rates simply refers to the cost of borrowing or the reward for saving. However, to increase the money supply in the economy, we reduce interest rates because it has a positive effect on investment. A reduction in interest rates triggers investors to invest more in the economy. However, this investment causes a multiplier effect in the economy and is and increases the money supply in the economy. However, for the contractionary monetary policy, this from the word contraction, we look at reducing the money supply in the economy. And this is usually the practice during inflation when there's too much money in the economy, which is in few goods, and um, this monetary authorities increase interest rates. And with the, it an increase in interest rates, the investors borrow less. And this reduces the money stock in the economy. On our next slide, we have the graphical illustration of contractionary and expansionary monetary policy. I'd like us to first note that on our y axis here, we have the interest rate, and on our x axis, we have the national income or the national output. Now, this is the IS curve, which slopes downward. From left to right is the IS curve, which shows the combinations of interest rates and income at, at the point at which the goods market is in equilibrium. And our LM curve shows the different combinations of interest rate and income at a point at which the money market is in equilibrium. However, where your IS and LM curve, where your goods market and money market is at equilibrium, is at point EO, where we have ISO and LMO to be at equilibrium. However, at this point, we see we have equal level of interest rates and equal level of national output. For expansionary monetary policy, to increase the monetary policy in the economy, it is affected in the money market. So for the money market, it will only affect the LM curve because it is related to the money market. And this causes our LM curve for expansion to shift outwards, that's rightwards. So our LM curve shifts from LM0 to LM1, and we establish another new equilibrium point at E1. And at this equilibrium point, you can see that they had to reduce the interest rates to increase or to motivate investors to invest more. So at this point, we have the resultant effect of this expansionary monetary policy is that it increases our national output from Y0 to Y1. However, for contractionary monetary policy, a contraction in the, in the money supply, we increase interest rates, which you can see from here. Interest rate is increased from R0 to R2, and we have our equilibrium level at E2 and our 
The national income or output also contracts from Y0 to Y2. However, to note the effectiveness, the economic effectiveness of this policy, whether contractionary or expansionary, it depends on the steepness or the flatness of our LM curve or IS curve. That being said, we'll be moving on to the next slide, which talks about the fiscal policy. And we said the fiscal policy is a deliberate attempt made by the government officials to regulate aggregate demand in the economy. Aggregate demand simply takes into con consideration the macro demand in the economy, the macro demands of individual households in the economy. However, instruments used on the fiscal policy include the government spending and the taxation. Fiscal policy are of two types. We have the expansionary fiscal policy and the contractionary fiscal policy. From the word expansion, we want to increase the aggregate demand in the economy. However, we increase government expenditure and we reduce taxation. Taxation is simply the levy that is imposed on every household who earns an income. However, this is used to fund the public welfare of the economy. Um, so a reduction in taxation increases the household purchasing power and however it also increases the aggregate demand. Why for con contractionary fiscal policy? This is a process by which the government cuts back on its expenditure and they increase taxation. They want to reduce the aggregate demand, they want to reduce the purchasing power of the household. However, they reduce their expenditure which is expected to cause a multiply effect on the economy and they increase taxation because when there's an increase in taxation, your consumer spending or your expenditure also reduces so your aggregate demand reduces so the graphical illustration is what we have here and we say on our y-axis we have the interest rates x-axis we have the national income or output and our point a1 is said to be the point of equilibrium between our money market and the goods market our money market which represent the lm curve and our goods market which represents the is curve so at this point, we have our interest rate to be R1 and our income is Y1. For expansionary fiscal policy, they don't want to increase the aggregate demand for or the aggregate expenditure of a household. It causes an outward shift because you're expanding the aggregate demand of the economy. However, our IS curve shifts outward from E1. We establish a new equilibrium at point E2 and this causes an increase in the interest rates and also an increase in our Y our national income or national output. And um, this change can be measured by calculating the point E1 to this point B. And it's calculated by saying, what's the change in this government expenditure multiplied by the government multiplier to calculate how much or the level of shift by how much did it shift outwards. However, for the decrease, a contractionary fiscal policy, this is when there's a reduction in the aggregate demand of our households. So this contracts the IS curve from IS1 to IS3. And we have another new equilibrium point at this point where we have reduced interest rates and reduced national income. So basically, the effectiveness of both monetary policy and fiscal policy depends on the slope of our curves. If the slope of our curves is steep and if the slope of our curve is flat, that's when we are able to detect how effective, if it's a short-term or a long-term change or a short-term or long-term lag, so we're able to understand this economic phenomenon. However, this is illustrations I've made is a basic foundation for you to be able to understand how it is illustrated on the graph. So on this note, I'll be stopping here for today. I want you to like, comment, and subscribe. You can also put your suggestions in the com comment sections for any further topic you would like me to take. And I'd love to say thank you for subscribing. Thank you.